started. Um, prehistoric quarries and terrains, the Modena and Tempayu obsidian sources in the American Great Basin, is a book about, well, what the title suggests, but um, I think we need to back up a little bit um, uh, when we're talking about it. Um, uh, whenever we're dealing with um, large scale um, uh, lithic assemblages, we're sort of retracing the steps of our ancestors. And in my case, um, I think we can trace back uh, the earliest influences on the sort of analysis I attended to William Henry Holmes of the Smithsonian Institution in the late 19th century, who did analyze a number of quarries, including Piney Branch in Washington, um, uh, others in Oklahoma, and obsidian quarries in New Mexico. Um, but um, let's talk a little bit uh, um, about uh, the context before I talk about the, the, the book. Um, the, the book is uh, despite differences in setting, problem, and analysis, is similar to my Mexican pottery ethnography, uh, ethnoarchaeology book, also published with um, uh, Utah, uh, in the sense that it isn't designed just to talk about Mexican pottery ethnoarchaeology or obsidian quarries in the Great Basin. Uh, it's intended to be of uh, broader interest to archaeologists who confront similar kinds of data and similar analytical problems in many parts of the of the world. So. Um, there are two quarries in, the, in this case, Modena and Tempayut. Uh, Modena is the larger one. It's located in the Pinyon Juniper Forest of a low mountain range. Um, it was discovered uh, by um, a BLM uh, site steward, that is a, a private citizen who worked with archaeologists, um, uh, Mr. Farrell Lytle. And Tempayut was uh, discovered by Bob Hafey, another site steward who uh, also worked with um, um, uh, BLM. So, uh, these are good examples of the sort of responsible avocational archaeologists that um, with colleagues I've uh, written about in, in uh, other contexts. Um, but the first thing that Mr. Lytle saw about the site of Modena was what he didn't see. He was sort of, he was literally blinded in the early morning light by the sunlight glistening off the literally millions of obsidian uh, flakes of the site. And he instantly realized this analytical potential. When I first visited it to reconnoiter it, um, I found myself walking uh, across areas that were larger than two or three football fields in, in size, and in which my feet never touched the solid earth. They simply walked across a loose talus of obsidian debris. Um, so it's a very, very um, large site. And I, I realized that to, to study the site properly, I'd need to do some probabilistic sampling. I won't go into the details. It used to be hot stuff in the 1970s. Archaeology has abandoned it now, but you really do need to have a control over the variation in your sample. So we used a probabilistic sample um, and we took a very tiny fraction of all of the material at the site. And yet that amounted to a truckload, literally a truckload of material. So the question becomes, what do you do with a truckload of obsidian from a couple of um, uh, quarries in um, uh, the southern part of the American Great Basin in um, um, uh, the Western United States? Um, well. Um, it was clear to me that we needed to systematically analyze the obsidian debitage itself because um, that was by far the most common material. So um, using um, a combination of attribute analysis, um, which we have proofed on an um, uh, experimental um, assembly of our own devising, and um, size distribution or mass analysis following the tradition of uh, Stan Ehler, um, um, we um, were able to characterize both um, quarries uh, assemblages in terms of how advanced in a redu reduction trajectory their chippage was in the aggregate. But we were able to go beyond qualitative judgments of early, middle, or late um, using a statistical technique that a, a former colleague um, in statistics at this university uh, worked out with me. Uh, we were able to attach um, um, uh, percentage estimates to the uh, fractions of material at, at the, uh, the site. So we're able to legitimately say that Modena is about 57% early stage material and 43% middle stage material. Uh, Tempayut about 30% uh, early, 40% uh, middle, 30% late. Um, that itself is, a, I think, a fairly uh, um, unique um, uh, um, result of the project. Then we went on to the large assemblage of um, obsidian preforms, um, um, and we compared them to uh, regional material, but in particular, uh, following Beck et al. in their um, interesting 2002 paper, um, we uh, used them to test the uh, field processing model, an evolutionary ecology model. Um, uh, but we tweaked their model by including um, um, more uh, continuous variables, volume, the Johnson thinning index, uh, weight, and so on. So we're able to, again, reduce the terms of that model to continuous, um, or we're able to reduce that model to its continuous terms. Um, after we finished that, or after that part of the um, um, uh, project was finished, um, I then uh, consulted um, uh, a large body of experimental um, data, mostly compiled by Stan Adler and Matt Root, um, to estimate the production volume of material at the site. 
And I also used an analytical core units um, concept um, developed by Bradbury and Carr in their own interesting work in the early aughts. Um, so I could come up with an estimate of uh, the production scale, how many bifaces uh, were produced at the site. What's more, once we looked at the obsidian hydration results from a, almost 100 uh, um, um, biface preforms, probably the single largest uh, assemblage of preforms that have been subjected to hydration dating, uh, we were able to produce a production curve for the site uh, and therefore to calibrate the production in amount to periods of time with somewhat surprising results. Um, uh, and then uh, um, in the final section, uh, I moved on to a, um, a comparison of material found at the uh, quarries um, to uh, both finished tools and, and debitage found um, at a number of different sites in both Modena's and Tempayut's terrains um, so that uh, I could um, chart the flow of different kinds of material in different technological classes um, uh, as they varied over time and over spatial scale across each of the quarries um, terrains. So yes, it's a book about um, two obsidian quarries in the Southern Gray Basin, but I like to think and I hope that it's a book that um, archaeologists who confront large obsidian quarry assemblages anywhere in the world would find something very useful um, from, uh, and that was my ultimate goal in writing the book.